What I will try to do in the short time that I have will be to give you the general principles that I did, that we did, that we found that were very successful for us, uh, both in Liberia and elsewhere, and others that have copied us and how it had worked. Then I will try to probably also tell you that partnership is not only just one way, it may also be broader than what you, what you, what you think. Well, when you look at partnership, from wherever you sit, sometimes you have to see it in many different ways. All right, you probably want to look at partnership in terms of power relations. If you were the big power like South Africa or maybe Nigeria or like the U.S., you probably see that partnership probably coming from the lenses of power relations, depending on your position that you have globally. And you, from where you are, you have to see it within that context as well. Others see partnership within the context of comparative advantage. That is, I have a better skill than what he has. Maybe I can contribute that. And probably I can also benefit from you. So using that comparative advantage, you want to apply that as well. Other CEO within the context of strategic relations, then that of interest between the two countries, the value that we share, the common interest that we have, the objective that we're trying to achieve. So they begin to see it within our context. And finally, as uh, Professor Joseph Nye from Harvard will say, partnership as an embodiment of soft power. That is an extension of the soft power that they have and advantages that they have that they begin to establish that kind of partnership. Well, a small country like Liberia coming out of a civil conflict, or maybe a country like Congo or uh, Central African Republic coming out of a conflict, there are many challenges and constraints that country will definitely be facing. Not only will you be facing technical constraints, but there will also be resource constraints. There will be specialized constraints you'll be facing, whether it is reforming the police sector or reforming the, um, the prison services or the Ministry of Defense, for that example, or even the intelligence services. So you have to be able to identify what are those constraints that you, that you have, specifically for which you need some specific assistance. Now, if you want to go to make a general request, the chances are the partner that has the capability or the resources available will detect to you exactly what they want to give you. So it is in your best interest to be able to know exactly what are those constraints that you're facing? Where do you have technical gaps? And where do you need specific assistance in that regard? One way to look at it is basically having a strategy. You may have an economic strategy, or you may have a national security strategy, or your development strategy. But there has to be something overarching out of which it may specifically relate to your institution for which you want to seek security or that kind of assistance. And with that kind of strategy, it help you then to identify priorities. What are those specific priority areas of need that can have an impact in your country for which you would want to ask that kind of assistance? You, I understand everything is a priority when you're coming out of a conflict. Like Liberia, everything was important. Everything was a top priority. But like the former minister of finance, the young fellow called um, Gafuan used to say, prioritize the priority. So now you have to identify that which is the most priority issues that are strategic in nature to your country for which secret assistance or whatever assistance you're talking about will be needed. What are those specialized constraints that you don't have? And then for you too, in order to go out to strengthen that partnership, you have to have some degree of accountability so that when you put, so that when your partners are thinking of providing assistance to you, they can believe that that assistance can be accountable in a way through transparency. By making sure it is transparent, your activities are transparent, people can see what is it you're doing. There's a clear set of policies that you're trying to put in place. And you must be able to articulate that strategy in a way. That is a better communication strategy. If you're seeking assistance and you cannot communicate your strategy in a good way, sometimes it gets muttered down and you will not be seen as they are coming very, very clear. So it is very important for you and I to articulate clearly what we want, what is it we need, what are the constraints we're facing, before we get out to go and make a request. Now, there are many areas in which you can make a request. You have bilateral partners. That is, if you want historically, maybe your colonial partners. That is, you want to probably, like Liberia will look at the US. Maybe Ghana will look at uh, Great Britain. Surely will look at Britain. Maybe Mali will look at France. Niger will look at France. So you have to see maybe within the context of a bilateral relationship. Secondly, you probably want to look at uh, maybe a sub-regional level. Like in the case of Liberia, immediately after the conflict, there were specialized skills that the Serlina already had, in which the British had provided by resources to what they call the Horton Institute. 
training uh, junior level up to middle level management in the military. So there was no need to replicate that in Liberia since we're just neighbors. So we took advantage of that and established a relationship between Liberia and Sierra Leone that allowed us to send uh, personnel over there from the military, from the police, from the prison services for middle level management training. Similarly, Liberia was then, on the other hand, getting acquired some skills from demining, unexplored ordinances. So there was no need for other countries in the region or immediately in the manner we're basing to create another training institute for that. So those skills were available for Sierra Leone to use, for Guinea to use, and for La Côte d'Ivoire to be able to use as well. So you may want to look at that kind of relationship within your region and see who partners have a comparative advantage that you can take advantage of. Similarly with ECOWAS, similarly with the African Union, and of course, uh, the rest of the international community. In the case of the African Union, what did Liberia do was that it was also important for us to move from the gym, from that middle level course, not to the senior level course, but to the in intermediate in between. How do we get some practical experience? So we went outside of the West African region, and we considered a country called Rwanda. And we had a discussion with Rwanda and asked them if we, we could get into a bilateral I mean, a partnership relationship. And Rwanda was able to accept, and Liberia also benefited from that particular package. Not only the military, we needed to reform the, um, the revenue services. We also benefited from training from Rwanda as well. We had training from different countries as well. So you can leverage the partnership based upon your own constraints, based upon your interests, and that which is most important to you. And li when Liberia needed to strengthen the immigration services, we went to uh, Ghana. Instead of private flying them to Germany, we asked the German in order to provide assistance to the Ghanaian Training Institute, and the Liberians went to Ghana to benefit. Similarly, when we were trying to build up the military, the time was too short to train a large group of people uh, infantry skills. So what did we do? We talked to Nigeria, and we sent almost an entire company size to Nigeria plus an officer to get specialized training and skills. So your country can take advantage of that. Today we have in, in, in Mali one of the peace training uh, institutes that have been sponsored by the French. There's a collaboration between the French and the Americans. So maybe instead of sending people all the way to the United States, to North America, or to Europe, we could take advantage of the training program that the Malian uh, Peacekeeping Institute has. Nigeria also has one. We could also take advantage of that. Uh, Ghana also have the Kofi Annan Institute. You can also take advantage of South Africa also has that institute that we can take advantage So all of these partnerships are available to us on the continent that we need to look at to see if we can take, we can take advantage of those, of those partnerships. Secondly, what you want to do is to also avoid a situation where there's an overlapping of requests in building that partnership. Now, how do you avoid that? Well, you know, the EU has its own program, the US has its own program, the French has its own program as individual countries. So you have to find a way to leverage it in a way that they are not overlapping. Overlapping requests, overlapping support, overlapping assistance, and therefore it becomes a clock on the kind of requests and assistance that you want to do. What we then tried to do at the Ministry of Defense, for one example, we were leveraging our relationship outside of the Western Hemisphere and went to Asia. How did we balance that request so that there would not be a conflict, to de-conflict that? So what we did, we made it very open. We created something called the Defense Support Group, in which all partners who want to provide assistance to Liberia will come on the table. And then Liberia specifically put that request forward and said, this is what our interest is, these are our needs. And I think our partner felt that there was transparency in what we were doing, there was accountability in what we were doing, there were merit in, in what we were trying to do, and it deconflicted the support that came to Liberia. So the Americans provided training, they provided assistance in certain areas, they provided capacity in certain areas, in other areas where the Americans uh, are restricted by the kind of money they can spend, and for what purpose, for one example, we're able to get another partner to give us equipment. So you had Americans providing training and services in one, and then the other area, we had a partner providing equipment for the various services for which another partner did the training. But you have to be strategic in doing that. You have to be able to navigate it in a way that is quite open. There's, not, there's no shadow request that you're trying to do, not to undermine any kind of support assistance that you could probably get for any one of those, uh, for one of those two countries. So it is very important if you're trying to leverage that partnership, make sure it is open in the things, in the things that, uh, that you do. 
And then finally, the synergy of technical assistance. I mean, for an example, um, there will be some technical support coming to you. Somebody might tell you we want to give you a ship. Well, they want to give you a ship for your Navy or for your Coast Guard, but you have no one trained. You don't have a boat ramp. You don't have spare parts for that, for that particular facility, for that particular equipment. You don't have the location and manpower for that. Why would you need that at a specific time? Probably do what we did. So what did we do? We requested first for a technical assessment on the need to develop X. So the technical assistant came and did a two weeks assessment with us and them throughout the country. And then finally, a uh, brief back was given. And that brief back identified all of the things with the following recommendations. That we should sequence our activities, meaning we should go in the, in the specific kind of way. That is, don't purchase equipment when you don't have personnel trained. Don't train personnel and you don't have the equipment for them to use. Don't bring the equipment and there are no spare parts to use. So what did we do? We, we then identify a time frame that will allow us to do all of that. So that by the time the equipment arrived, the personnel are trained, the facilities are completed, the spare parts, the chain of spare parts are already available, and we're ready. By the time the equipment came, it was just to hit the ground and running, and it worked. And you want to make sure that you're leveraging a partnership within the context of an enduring relationship. That is a relationship that goes beyond you as a person. A relationship that goes beyond you and your personal interests. A relationship that can be easily picked up upon by whoever comes next. And you can do that on the basis of institutional reforms. So what did we do? We were able to ask, for an example, the, um, uh, the Americans to help us through what they call Defense Institutional Reform Institute, the DIRI. It's a program at the U.S. Department of Defense. Your country can ask them, and it'll be more than willing to probably send one or two persons to help you uh, in your institution if you're trying to reform it. And through you and through that assistance, you can help on the development of policies if you want. You help to build and train your staff. It is available. You can do that with other countries, uh, other countries as well. It is very important when you're doing that to make sure it is linked to your overarching national security strategy from the beginning or your overall development strategy that you're trying to have from the beginning. I'll be more than glad to go into more specific examples as we proceed. Thank you very much.